The third ENIAC programming team was comprised of Jean Bartik and Betty Holburton. As ENIAC programmers, they took on the challenging task of learning the master programmer, which directed the performance of all program sequences of the ENIAC. They led the entire group in programming the ballistics trajectory for the February 14, 1946 demonstration. But that was only the beginning. After the war, Jean Bartik worked on the team that converted the ENIAC into a stored program machine, making it easier and faster to program larger and more sophisticated problems. Jean then programmed the BINAC, designed logic for UNIVAC-1, designed an electrostatic memory backup system for UNIVAC-1, and later developed reports to help businesses understand a powerful new class of computers, the microcomputer. She worked tireless, tirelessly to make computers easier to use. We are proud to induct Jean Bartik to the Witte Hall of Fame for her outstanding contributions to the advancement of science and technology. We are also proud to induct Kathleen Mockley Antonelli to the Witte Hall of Fame for her outstanding contributions to the advancement of science and technology. Jean will accept on her own behalf as well as for Kathleen. Thank you so much. Uh, however, before I accept these awards, which I will be happy to do, I want to recognize three people. First, I want to recognize a beautiful, bright, curious, young Washington, D.C. lawyer. Without her efforts, none of the ENIAC programmers would be here today. When she was a student at Harvard University, she never heard of any women uh, that were at the beginning of the computer industry. To her surprise, she saw a reference to us later, and she got very curious about it and began to uh, investigate it. She came to the 40th anniversary of the introduction of the ENIAC, and in fact, she tells me she met me, although I'm ashamed to say I don't remember it. Uh, but anyway, when she came to that celebration, she discovered that we were the first programmers, and uh, so she wondered why we'd never been mentioned anywhere. So when the 50th anniversary came up, she called Steve Brown at the University of Pennsylvania and asked him if he had invited the ANIAC programmers. And he said, no, why should he? So <laughs> she was very disturbed by this. So apparently she pestered him a bit. And during the course of this pestering, she became friends with his secretary. And about this time, Top Petzinger of the Wall Street Journal heard about us Got, it's got some reference to it. So he also called Steve Brown. Well, when he called, he talked to the secretary, and she said, well, you know, there's a woman that's been asking the same kind of questions. Why don't you talk to her? So <laughs> she gave this woman, uh, uh, gave uh, Tom Petzanger this woman's telephone number, and he called her. And uh, so she persuaded him that our story was worth investigating, which he proceeded to do. And uh, after the articles appeared, uh, this woman has more or less been handling the activities surrounding us. And she also has gone ahead and is raising funds to make a documentary. Anyway, I would like to, you all to recognize at this time, Catherine Kleiman. The second person I would like to recognize is Tom Petzinger. 
who did believe our story was worth telling and willing to work on it and to provide the forum for telling it. Uh, he worked on this, he was very hard working about this, he worked on it for about a year. In fact, he spent a day with me in February 1996, and he also spent a day with Betty and a day with Kay. He went to all the uh, activities surrounding the 50th anniversary of the Antioch, so we saw him a number of times and talked to him on the telephone. Anyway, what he decided to do was to write two upfront columns on Friday in the marketplace section of the Wall Street Journal, and these appeared in November 1996. As a result of these articles, all sorts of things have began to happen. And <laughs> all sorts of people were contacting us and discovered us and, you know, had all kinds of proposals, some good and some bad. But anyway, <laughs> and some of which we made a fool of ourselves over. But that's another story. <laughs> this sequence of events reminded me of the power of the press, even today, and especially the Wall Street Journal. So although Tom is not here, I would like for this group to recognize him. <laughs> now the third person I would like to recognize is my son, who nominated us for this award. He saw the invitation for nominations on the internet and he called uh, to find out if uh, a person could nominate a relative. <laughs> so they said yes. And uh, so that's what happened, he nominated us. He would be here today except that he gave me a choice of an airline ticket to visit my grandchildren or him being here today and I chose visiting my grandchildren to take the trip. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to recognize my son, Tim Bark. Now, thank you so much for this award. I am thrilled by it for something that happened almost a lifetime ago. I am even more thrilled by seeing all of you wonderful women who are successful in your careers in math and science today. I'm also thrilled to be among the honorees that you have given awards today. These were given awards for things they have done now, not something from a long time ago. All of you disprove the myth that math and science are too hard for women to learn. Personally, I feel it's all been a plot by the men to keep women from knowing how much fun math and science are. <laughs> so my philosophy is, why should the men have all the fun? So thank you very much for this award. <laughs> now I would like to accept the, and I'm very happy to accept the award for Kathleen McNulty, Mockley, and Tonelli. Now as you can tell from all these names, she is the marrying kind. <laughs> she was married to John Mockley, the co-inventor of the ANIAC, and then uh, John died in 1980, and in 1985 she married Severo Antonelli. Well, it turns out that Severo is a world-class photographer with photographs in museums around the world. And this led her stepdaughter to say to me one day, well, I guess the next time around she'll marry a, a world-famous athlete. So all I can say right now is 
Uh, Michael Jordan, look out. <laughs> Kay McNulty, Mockley, and Tonelli has been my friend for 52 years. Let me say that she has more grace and charm than all the rest of us put together. She is a warm, creative, bright, wonderful woman. Today, she is living it up in Paris <laughs> with seven of her classmates who graduated with her from Chestnut Hill College in 19... 41. I spoke to her on Tuesday morning before she left for the airport. She said it was an honor for her to receive this award for programming the first computer faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> now in case some of you do not understand that reference, the demonstration problem for the introduction of the ANIAC was showing it, computing a trajectory faster than it took the bullet to trace it. Ah, so thank wow. you very much, ladies and gentlemen.